Mamas, it's Shay Bland. Welcome back to the Mommy Me Please podcast. Today I have a special guest and she is going to share her name, um, how old her baby is, and then her baby's name. I am Fatima Robinson. Um, Imara is four months old and my daughter's name is Imara. <laughs> <laughs> so um, both of us um, had a baby during the pandemic. And so this um, episode is strictly on that. Um, and so, yeah, so the first question I want to ask was, what was the most difficult challenge you faced while being pregnant during the pandemic? Um, the most difficult challenge for me had to be um, when I was pregnant, I couldn't really see anyone mm -hmm. and I couldn't really have the assistance or my family there. Um, you know, my baby shower had to be virtual gender reveal virtual there were a lot of things where i wish i could have been with my family who was actually in new york so they're from i'm from brooklyn um so with my family not being there it was it was really difficult and you know i was sick and the only person i could really really be around was my husband mm -hmm. and i could barely be with my parents i could barely be with my in-laws it was just my husband yeah. and i yeah so same it was definitely the fact of i could not go anywhere like I'm a, I always say I'm a very spontaneous person. I like to get up and go. And the mm -hmm. fact that I couldn't see family, I couldn't see friends, have them come over, um, it was a little bit difficult. And honestly, like, a little depressing. Like, I don't like to be in a room by myself. I don't yeah. like to be, like, in the house by myself. My husband had to still work. So me yeah. being pregnant in the house, looking at four walls was sometimes <laughs> depressing. He's like, he didn't get it until actually, because we both had COVID, we did end up catching COVID after we had a child. But when he caught COVID, he um, found out how stressful and depressing it is to be in the house and can't go nowhere. So that's definitely like one of the biggest challenges was having to be in the house. So yeah. let's see, do you feel the pandemic benefited you in any way while you were pregnant? Yes. If so what was the benefit? Yes, I do. Um, so the benefit for me would actually be that when I um, found out I was pregnant, it was about March 1st. Mm -hmm. um, so my job actually stopped us working and we began to work remotely March 14th. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, I went through the throwing up stage, the mm -hmm. everything, everything that I went through while pregnant, my sore feet, everything. I went through at home mm -hmm. so I could rest, I could relax. That was a positive of being in the pandemic is mm -hmm. that I could still work, mm -hmm. but at the same time I could be sick and I didn't have to take off from work. So yeah. that was the benefit. It's crazy. So a little <laughs> backstory about like Fatima, right? She lives right across the street, okay? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so we both was pregnant during the pandemic. We both came home the same month. Yep. So like, that's why it's like really like special because we both kind of went through the same thing. And yep. so I would definitely agree when he said being home and being able to work and not have to take off. I didn't get too sick. However, it was um, the smell of people warming up their lunch at work. Oh man. I was like, it stinks so bad. But like, once I came home, it was still like the refrigerator. Like y'all, I could not go to the refrigerator. Yeah, that was me. I, I couldn't do the fridge. Yeah. But not only that, but because I was so early, I didn't get sick. Um, or morning sickness when everyone else got morning sickness, mm -hmm. you know, before the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. I got morning sickness when I came home. Oh. Like everything hit me like three weeks after we were home. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, oh man, like I don't feel good. I only could eat, at one point I could only eat Lucky Charms. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. Brandon had to bring it upstairs. I wouldn't eat anything at one point. I could only eat Lucky Charms. It was so bad. It was so bad. I was so sick. I was so sick and finally, you know, second trimester, everything was good, mm -hmm. but um, I actually had a little bit of a difficult pregnancy, so mm -hmm. it benefited me because um, they assumed that my daughter was IUGR, which is intrauterine growth restricted. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to have to go to the doctor's appointments like every week I was mm -hmm. in a doctor's office. Ooh, and that started that. second, mm -hmm. That started oh. second trimester. So she was born early because they scheduled it early mm -hmm. because they assumed that she was intrauterine growth restricted. So for the people that don't know what that is, <coughs> me, what <laughs> is that? Like So basically she was a smaller baby. Okay. So they thought, so I had to go to a um, MFM 
Um, so I'm a maternal fetal medicine doctor as mm-hmm. well as my um, OB. Mm-hmm. Um, so every week I literally had to go to a doctor and I would get an ultrasound every two weeks mm-hmm. instead of every month mm-hmm. or every other month. Um, so with that being said, um, her heart was fine. Every time they went, everything was fine. Long story short, she really didn't need to come out. She wasn't mm-hmm. IUGR. So it kind of okay. made me mad a little bit because mm-hmm. I felt like they pulled her out at the wrong time. But mm-hmm. at the same time with the, um, with COVID hitting, I was able to work. Like my mom would drive me to the doctor's appointments mm-hmm. and I would work in the car oh. using my hotspot oh. and just work. And I literally only took off maybe an hour each time. See, them being home is like, it's stressful because like you're in the house, but it's very beneficial too. Cause like you said, I mean, the born and sickness and all the other things that come with pregnancy, mm-hmm. I was able to be in the comfort of my home, which was good. Yeah. All right. So do you feel you were prepared to become a mom? So we're both first time moms mm-hmm. in a pandemic. Where's you prepared? <laughs> No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, like every book, every mommy group, I'm in mommy groups on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I promise you, it was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to allow my daughter to do this. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm studying on vaccines. I'm studying on this. And oh, it's going to be natural this. I'm going to be honest with you. Half the time, I just follow the beat of her drum. Like, mm-hmm. just like with food. Like right now, we're starting on rice cereal or baby oatmeal. Mm-hmm. I thought I would do baby led waning. Didn't happen. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, okay. You know, grabbing at my plate. All right, let's go ahead and do oatmeal mm-hmm. and see if that stuffs you up. So like, for me, the the expectations that I had completely went out the window by yes. two weeks. It was over. Yes. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just do what she wants to do. No, that was the first day. She came home, and I said it before. I said, my baby not going to sleep with me. Listen. And then she was right there beside yes, me. Yes, that's exactly I mean, that's what just, happened. You know, literally, like, when you said the beat to their drum, they literally run it right now, like, they're babies, and you can't really tell them what to That's tell exactly what, what happened. Do. Like, her halo bassinet, I got it. I was like, oh, I'm going to have this halo. It's mm-hmm. going to be so great. And then it has all our clothes. <laughs> it, has all yep. stuff. it has her stuff in it. And it's like, we don't even use that halo. She never likes it. She hates it. It's horrible. Don't buy it. You don't have to. <laughs> I have but, a um, bassinet. Same Aubrey Wolf. <gasps> <laughs> That was my water, guys. <laughs> Don't hold water. Um, but yeah, she she hates the bassinet. The playpen... She sleeps in it sometimes. Um, and the Dakota she likes, but the bassinet. She likes the Dakota too. She don't like it. Uh-uh. I guess it's too hard. It's too much. I don't know. Mm-mm. She just don't like it. So. But the baby loves the Dakota for some reason. Yeah. The Dakota like, wins. Yeah, and that was expensive. They move, but yeah, it woo, is it's good. But when they move, they touch it, so they feel like somebody's holding them. Mm-hmm. I think it's just you know comforting. Yeah. Um, but I definitely will say I wasn't prepared. Mm-mm. I said all the things I was gonna do. All the things Listen. I wasn't gonna do. Let me tell you, so beforehand, the first 48 hours, right? Thankfully, um, you know, the doctors allowed because Brandon had to work. Mm -hmm. So he saw the birth on the day of the birth. He had a test that he had to take for his job that next day. So (laughs) how they did it was, you know, at the hospital, you're only allowed one support person. Mm -hmm. So the hospital, you know, felt bad for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. So what they did was as soon as... As soon as Amara was born, Mm -hmm. maybe two hours later, my mom was allowed to switch over with Brandon. Mm -hmm. So she was able to take care of me for the 48 hours after I gave birth. So he was able to see her Mm -hmm. and she was able to help me, which helped a lot because I almost gave her formula. Mm -hmm. Like the first 20, the first 24 hours was like, I didn't know if she was getting enough. I was crying. Mm -hmm. I was miserable. They kept coming in every 15 minutes. And I was like, okay, I'm fed up. I'm giving her formula. My mom grabbed her and was like, you're not giving my grandbaby formula. (laughs) Like, you're not doing it. The nurse came in. I called the nurse. She gave us four things of formula. Long story short, I didn't give her Mm -hmm. the formula. But, you know, I was at that point. And that's another issue with the pandemic is because you only can have one support person. It's so hard because my mom... You know, she was, I was lucky enough to be able to switch her over. Mm -hmm. Had it been my husband, he's formula fed. His daughter was formula fed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, had it been him, he would have said, okay, just give her the formula so she'll be quiet. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, how my mom did it, which was, you're not giving her formula. She's getting everything she needs. Mm -hmm. Don't do that right now. So let's jump into it. So that was one of my questions kind of for the other line, but let's just skip. So... (laughs) Um, when it came to breastfeeding, what was your biggest challenge? So I didn't know, you I, know, about the 
about the, you know, being you being in the hospital and feeling like, you know what, this is crazy. I'm ready to give her formula. Mm-hmm. Was it anything else like I mean that was big, but anything else like Yeah, with so so with breastfeeding, um the first two weeks were kind of like well not even the first two weeks. I, yeah, I would say that. So with the first two weeks, it was so hard. Mm-hmm. Like it it had to be the hardest ones because I didn't know if I was giving her enough. I didn't know what I was doing. My mom who breastfed me, you know, she was like, you know, Fatima, it's okay. She's getting enough. She's mm-hmm. getting enough. And I kept saying, oh, my baby's not eating correctly. She keeps crying. She keeps crying because I didn't know her yet. Mm-hmm. And she didn't know me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's crazy because finally I went to my doctor's appointment with her, you know, or her doctor's appointment. Mm-hmm. And at her two weeks, she had gained two and a half pounds. See? I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> she was five pounds even mm-hmm. when we left the hospital. She was seven and a half pounds at her two week appointment. That's good. So I was like, wow, I guess I'm giving her enough. enough and that yeah. kind of like helped me a lot. But I feel like the difficulty was that as well as the fact of her attachment, which is still today mm-hmm. the issue is that she's super attached to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's gotten better now that she's older, mm-hmm. but when she was between, you know, firstborn to three months old, she wouldn't go to anybody. Like and they don't tell you that when they tell you to breastfeed, y'all. I was like, why does she only like want me? It was so stressful because it's just like do like yeah i love you i do but, but I, I need a break face. like it was it was crazy but like with my breastfeed i think i told you but like i ended up with metitis yeah because i didn't know what to do with my milk so i think the biggest challenge for me with being pregnant in the pandemic was not having a lactation coach mm-hmm. so you were at the mm-hmm. hospital so you were I, one. yes i had a lactation I wasn't specialist given one because i was who at me. a birthing center yeah and it's my first child, so I didn't even know like that was a thing. Yeah. But so I next time I will go and get me a lactation coach. Yes, you have to because honestly, that also benefited me. And just to gear back for the breastfeeding, mm-hmm. the next day she came into the the um, room. Mm-hmm. So the lactation specialist finally came in. She gave me two free nipple shields. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I ended up renting a pump until my pump came in, mm-hmm. and then it was something else she gave me. Oh, and then she taught me how to breastfeed on a certain way. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't breastfeed the way that she told me the football yeah, me hold yeah. i didn't do that <laughs> but you know um that was something that she helped me with and she actually like helped me and yeah. held it and everything and it was like okay had i not had her and my mom in that hospital i don't know what i would have done because yeah. it was the first what they don't tell you is the first 48 hours are the hardest they gonna be on difficult. your nipple the whole time <laughs> it's not it's stop. so difficult and it's like they don't tell you that they don't they don't tell it's like oh yeah you know having kids is a breeze and, blah, and blah, breastfeeding blah. No. Oh, you just see the breastfeeding moms like oh now it don't hurts. get me wrong but it, it used to hurt and don't get me wrong now i'll be cooking yeah. and, you know i'll be doing everything but the first like i'll be telling you know people that's breastfeeding now i'm like it's hard. The first couple of weeks are going to be hard. Yes. But once you get through it, you're good. You're good. Now, the nipple shields. So, I did use nipple shields because my, like, nipples are, like, invert. What is it called? Flat. They're flat. Uh-huh. Does just say that. They're flat. So I, I had to because they cracked. Okay. They cracked bad. So, how did you wean her off of the nipple shield? I didn't. To be honest with you, I did a bunch of stuff that I just randomly was like, all right, I'm just going to try something. Mm-hmm. You know, I know she's going to have to drink from the breast, but we're mm-hmm. going to pr- figure something out. For two weeks, she was primarily on the bottle at one point in time because my nipples cracked so mm-hmm. bad. I was like, I can't have her on there. Mm-hmm. Like, it hurts so bad. And then um, the nipple shield piece, like, I used it randomly, mm-hmm. but I honestly had to work through the pain. Like, mm-hmm. it, that's really what it yeah. was. It was working through the pain. Like, that pain is a mind. Like, it it, it'll mess with you. But once you get to a point where your nipples get better mm-hmm. and they actually, like, I don't know what happens with the nipple, but for some reason it's like it just turns on yeah. the switch and it's, it's like, like, oh, okay. I can do this. Yeah, it's all right. right. <laughs> it's not flat no more. It's like, oh, I'm here for baby. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, so the nipple shield, Aubrey was on it for a very long time and I used to feel like I wasn't good enough. So like, oh, I have to use a nipple shield. Like everybody else is like, you know, just out here breastfeeding their baby. I used to feel so bad. Like no. if you lose the nipple shield. Oh, oh that was no. bad. So I lost oh, no. the nipple shield, y'all. And I was in the car and I was trying to feed her and she wouldn't latch. And so oh. she was frustrated because she was hungry. But she I probably was frustrated. got used to it yeah. though. That's she, oh, the yeah. issue is she got used to the nipple shield. See, with me, with Amara, I would switch on and off because mm-hmm. sometimes I didn't feel like cleaning everything, cleaning. Do- I was like, let me put that over there. 
over there to wash. She's just gonna have to deal with my yeah. nipple right now. It is what it is. And so I wish I would have. I wish I would have done that because she was solely, you know, and it sticks out. So she just yeah. go, used to like going and boom. But like again, my nipples were very flat, so it was very hard for her to latch. And then so one day, um, and this is for all the moms that are using a nipple shield. One day I just like held my breast and I like pinched it. That's what I did. And that's so it, exactly it how it did. come out. And I had to do it like, you know, two, maybe You got to help them though. Yeah. That's what it that, is. after that, she was able to latch on. And now they're not flat. They just, you know. Yeah. But see, <laughs> you got to help them though. That's the thing is that I don't think they teach you that, you know, it's not just, oh, here you go. And the mm -hmm. baby, yes, they can find the nipple, but sometimes it's hard for them to latch. Mm -hmm. So you have to help them. Sometimes, you know, luckily we don't have the tongue tie issue, mm -hmm. but sometimes they have a tongue tie. There are so many other reasons that are not your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault. Or a lip tie. Because yeah. I just found that a couple of days ago. It never um, bothered Aubrey for latching. With gas, I think it has. That's she what has I was, a lip tie. Yeah. And for y'all that don't know, a lip tie is right here. It's like if you lift it up, you'll be able to see the skin. And then yeah. a tongue tie is the same thing. Like, I don't have a tongue tie. Like, I can lift my tongue yeah. on it. But, um, so that's what that is. But she was able to, like I said, latch to the nipple shield. And then after I worked with her, she was able to latch, you know, to, um, to me. And then I just, yeah. like, felt so much better. But any mom out there like, oh, my God, I'm not good enough for the nipple shield. Yes, you are. It's just something to help you through it. It's okay. Like. Also, what I will recommend for any mom out there is to follow the mommy boards. Or not necessarily a mommy board, the breastfeeding, exclusively breastfeeding group. Mm -hmm. Because what you can do is they will tell you options before you have to do formula. If you want to do formula, that's fine. I don't want you to think yeah. that it's, <laughs> it's bad to do formula. That's a personal preference. Mm -hmm. But if you are really trying to go through the breastfeeding journey... Follow the exclusively breastfeeding moms because that that group was good for me. That's, that's good. and it's I think there are millions of moms that mm -hmm. are in there now. But honestly, and that's, that's like good. yeah, and that's not a you know plug. That's just real life. That's mm -hmm. what helped me. Good. Well, let's see because you know I had skipped down. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that was that was my next question. Okay, so cool. Today's episode is sponsored by InFocus Media. From portraits, weddings, and sporting events, they have all of your media needs. Be sure to visit their Instagram page at InFocus Media and their website, InFocusMedia.com, and let them know Mommy Me Please podcast sent you. Back to the show. So now, we're going to go into our popcorn questions. So I'm going to ask you a question okay. that you weren't prepared for. Okay. And then, yours is kind of easy though. Um, and then you just let me know. So if you could change being pregnant in the pandemic for being pregnant during normal times, would you? To be honest with you, no. I wouldn't. But why? Because I, being pregnant in the pandemic, Although it had its faults of I couldn't go outside, mm -hmm. the other thing that was the benefit is, number one, I'm still able to be at home with my baby. Mm -hmm. I'm still able to rest at home where a lot of mothers aren't able to do that while they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. Like, And that's, that's another thing that I don't think people do research. I did research on it. A lot of moms being in the pandemic help them mm -hmm. because they're not on their feet as much. Mm -hmm. um, what we didn't talk about is I actually work in DC. Mm -hmm. So like yes. my commute <laughs> is bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> so I would be on the van for a hour and a half. Okay. To get to work. To, to get to work early in the morning, waking up at four o'clock in the morning to get to work and wouldn't get home till 730 at night. So with that being said, dedicated worker. Okay. Yes. Listen, <laughs> it was, it's a lot, but with that being said, you know, a lot of moms, they, you know, do the commute. And to be honest with you, they do the commute every day and they're pregnant and it's it's taking a toll on their bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of moms have a lot of issues throughout their pregnancy. If you do the research, because of the pandemic, it was actually a lot less issues mm -hmm. with moms pregnancy. because they were able to kick their feet up, work remotely, less stress on their bodies, yes. and that's just what it was. So that's why I personally wouldn't have traded that for the world, and I thank God every day that that's what happened, mm -hmm. because you know, although I wasn't able to go outside, not only was I able to rest, I wasn't sick, mm -hmm. like sick with a flu or mm -hmm. sick with anything because we were in the house, mm -hmm. nobody passing germs, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. And then not only that, but even now I'm able to work from home mm -hmm. with my baby, even though stay at home mom <laughs> slash work from home mom life is 
hard. That's why I said my baby on her way. Like, hard. Good vibe. But that, I, I definitely that's a whole nother topic. Yes, yeah, to you because we tried it. Yeah. And girl, jeez, I'm like, okay, baby, you gotta Listen, go. it's hard. <laughs> it's not for the week. But at the same time, you're able to still spend time with your child. Yes. And, you know, if you want to do it, you can do it. If you, if you can't do it, you just can't do it. Because yeah. to be honest with you, I, I get help from my mom. I'll drive all the way to Fredericksburg just to get help mm -hmm. because, you know, it's hard to do it by yourself, you know, yeah. you know, but it's just, we got to do it. Yeah. Like mom so I definitely wouldn't change because, um, I definitely feel like it made me a better person, like overall, like just because of the whole experience and, um, hello, I would, I don't believe <laughs> I would have the mom and me please. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it would have went totally different because for yeah. one, um, I started off in a hospital, like yeah. where midwife's in a hospital. And because of the pandemic, you know, the um, midwives got furloughed. So I ended yeah. up at a birthing center. And so I think because of the, some of the challenges I had to go through, it birthed this mm -hmm. whole, like, community. And, yeah. like, I feel like I found my purpose. Like, yeah. I've always been like, oh, well, I, I want to do this and I want to do that. But I wasn't really, like, passionate about it. I'm, like, really, really passionate about yeah. this. So I feel like if I wouldn't have been pregnant in the pandemic, I wouldn't have been able to birth this. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wouldn't change being pregnant in the pandemic. Yeah. Because, like, it wouldn't be, you know, this. Yes. Um. Okay, so lastly... Can you just share some tips for moms that's pregnant in the pandemic? I know I'm putting you on the spot. But like, <laughs> what tips can you just like maybe give moms? Um, or about pregnancy in general? Like pregnancy in general or pregnancy in the pandemic. My biggest tip is if you can do Amazon groceries, do Amazon groceries, <laughs> Instacart. Girl, yes. that's a shameless plug, but seriously, <laughs> do something to where you're delivering. That's something. Um, what else? Your partner needs to help. Like, honestly, if you can have a helpful partner, that is all that could, you know, that'll definitely work for you. And receiving the help. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's hard. Like, for me, you feel like, okay, this is my baby. You know. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta yeah. do it. But receiving that help. Yeah. I know for me at first, um, I had that problem where I was like, oh, no, just give me my baby. Because it would be like, oh, well, she's the type... All right, just give her to me. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to just take her, do what I have to do, and move on. Mm -hmm. But it took... Brandon forced me to go out for the weekend in mm -hmm. January, and it was to go to a lake house, right? Mm -hmm. My mom watched her. I had so much mommy guilt. Mm -hmm. I was talking about her the whole time. Oh, how, so how old was she when you She went? was three months. Okay. Three months. But, like, I had so much mommy guilt, like, in... And it wasn't because, you know, I didn't trust my mom because mm -hmm. my mom raised me, so I trust her. Mm -hmm. It was because I felt like, oh, man, she needs me. She's going to go through it. Mm -hmm. She's a mess without me. She was fine. She was <laughs> fine. She was fine. My, and, and then not only that, but we have the outlet. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> so you I was said, looking <laughs> on the security camera y'all i was not even the, the foot i was checking the foot like oh let me make sure her heart rate is good make sure she breathing she breathing her sleep quality is all right oh Let's my check goodness that. that's so funny so i did that but um yeah trusting people is a big one um another one that i would say is relax just relax it's like I understand, you know, it's stressful, life is stressful, but just just enjoy being home because mm -hmm. when you have to work and you have to do that every day, the grind, it's so difficult. It is. So it's like, why why even stress yourself out? Don't stress. Um, I know another thing for me is it was, you know, finding the right doctor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because um, when I first was pregnant, like you said, I had actually switched doctors. Mm -hmm. I switched doctors two times mm -hmm. oh yeah but not not <laughs> the second time was not because i d wanted to but mm -hmm. because i had to okay. so um actually story the first doctor that i had was my gynecologist from when i was in maryland right mm -hmm. i switched over to virginia doctor mm -hmm. because i needed someone in locally mm -hmm. um or not local but you know closer, closer. to um so i went to a black woman mm -hmm. doctor I didn't realize she was pregnant too at this time. Uh, yes. She ended up having to um, go on maternity leave. Mm. <laughs> so then I they had. They tell you? They told me at the last minute. minute. <laughs> so then, like, literally, she recommended me to an MFM and then she went out on maternity leave. 
<laughs> and then she oh, was like, okay. why didn't she was mad? She was upset at first because she was like, why didn't um my previous doctor mm-hmm. didn't send or recommend me to an MFM based off of the the, the, situation. the situations uh, with the ultrasounds, mm-hmm. right? Because Imara was seventy five percent her weight at one point, and mm-hmm. then she dropped down to like. 15 mm-hmm. percent so every time i would go in it would be up and down up and down and she was like why didn't they recommend you before to yeah. an mfm he never recommended me to an mfm nothing so i finally i was recommended went to the mfm and then right when i was supposed to go back to um my ob mm-hmm. she was out and i had to go through another ob however i thank god like i said that she was there mm-hmm. to to do it in the first place because mm-hmm. if not I would have been screwed yeah. it would have been over um you know I I was vi- like they looked over me a lot so my biggest tip also would be contact make sure your doctor's checking on you make sure yeah. they're doing the the urine samples everything needs to, be done, to be done yeah. every week because as black women that is a big problem in mm-hmm. the black community is you know maternal what is it maternal mort- know, mortality maternal. rates yeah yeah so they just get treated differently they they expect <laughs> let, let's be honest they <laughs> expect us to be so strong, strong yeah but they forget that we're human yeah and it's like i did that with the um birth and i did a lot of research um but i wanted to make sure that just because i was black and if i say i'm hurting i'm really hurting yes, not yes. you're strong yes i yes. am strong but like you said, I'm human and it hurts. So like, but see, you know, you know what scared me is that there was a story like right when I was about 14 weeks pregnant. I don't know if I told you about that. Where in New York City, Brooklyn, New York, there was a girl who was pregnant mm-hmm. in February. She had gotten her um, urine samples. The pandemic hit and she was unable to get a doctor. Right. Mm-hmm. So finally, she finally found her do- or her doctor finally came because she was doing telehealth. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Finally, she was able to go back to a doctor. She did a urine sample and it was something where her um, blood count was low. So her, her blood count was low mm-hmm. um, or white cell blood count was yeah. low. Probably her red blood. Yes. Blood. Yeah. Some, something, if I'm not mistaken, red blood cells, something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, long story short, they had to do an emergency C-section and she passed away. The, the mom? The mom passed away. You know what? I did hear about this. Yeah. Yes. I did, I did, I did. It was a, I actually heard about it on Instagram, though. It was, a, it was a story. No, my cousins were telling me about this story. Like, it was the... Were, yeah, it was bad. I think I do... I remember I seen it on um, on Instagram. But yeah, it's a lot of... um. I forgot the term. I can't remember the term. But basically, black women being treated mm-hmm. a little different. Unfairly. So, yeah, unfairly. So... That's that. So definitely do research on your doctor. <laughs> Make sure they doing what they supposed to be doing. Do your own research. Um, even when it comes to vaccination and stuff like that, mm-hmm. they're gonna tell you what they want to tell you. But it's very important for you to do your own research. Yes. So. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you for thank coming you. by thank and you. sharing your story, sharing a couple tips with us. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Let's play it together. There's nothing better.